What's going on y'all, it's your boy Beasley. I hope you all are having a wonderful day today and staying positive and motivated. You know, I gotta say, all bullshit aside, um, today and yesterday have just been absolutely beautiful. I mean, the sun is shining, the weather is on California status, and it may be because spring has finally set in, but also I think it's because now that all that body heat is off the street, the ozone layer is clearing up and Mother Earth is reclaiming her time. But I wanted to come at you guys today with a video kind of going over more into the things that I like and the person that I am. And also, please excuse the um, jagged edge up. I didn't put on my bonnet today. I decided to come at you guys raw and uncut. And also, these aren't dreads, by the way. These are um, two-strand twists. Um, before the quarantine hit, I wanted to make sure that I had my hair at least in a protective style to make sure that it would grow. Black people, your hair will grow if you just um, twist it up, braid it up, or leave it the fuck alone. Um, and also a fun fact, I think around like um, last summer, my hair was actually way longer than this. Uh, what happened was um, back in July of 2019, uh, I got kind of tired of rocking the twist all the time. So I wanted my barber to um, shape my hair into just like an Afro style. And what she did was she initially started it off right, but then she kind of ended up hacking the shit out of it. Like she would um, go over it and then it would look uneven. So she would go over the other side and then she kept on going around and around until I ended up leaving out of the damn barbershop with a flat top. Now, it didn't look bad because my barber doesn't do good work, but it just really stunted my growth and it kind of made me a little down and depressed for about two weeks, but I got over it. But uh, a little bit more about me. Um, I am college educated. I went to Prairie View A&M University. I got my degree in marketing, which I have yet to use. <laughs> I um, graduated and I started in 2010, left in 2014, so I graduated on time, thankfully. I will so say, though, one thing that I do regret is my senior year, I was just so over it and so so just going through a lot, and I was tired of being up there. So I ended up kind of rushing my last semester. Like, I was taking six classes while working two jobs, and I really honestly don't even remember how I made it all the way through that, but hey, it was all in God's work. So a little bit of bore about my, my family. Um, I have two parents. They're still together, still living. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, I'm the middle child of two brothers. A lot of people kind of write off the middle child as, oh, cliche issues. Oh, you don't get enough attention. We don't get enough attention. But I actually love being the middle child because I feel like I'm the more level-headed out of us three. I'm the more... Um, logical i mean no shade to them they're smart but i feel like i think a lot i'm a lot more open-minded than they are if that makes sense love them too to death though uh my favorite music artist um starting off with like male artists i love kendrick lamar absolutely love his music um if i listen to him to a long for a long time though his voice kind of starts to grate on my nerves I love Lil Baby. I love Da Baby. Now, Da Baby to me, great artist. I love his sound, but I am starting to really get tired of him thinking that he could just fight the world. Like, he, any person that crosses him, like, he just whoops on their ass. And I'm just like, dude, you can't fight every fucking battle all the time. And when he ended up hitting that girl, I was really not here for that at all. I really hope that she takes him to court and gets all the money because that shit was just really fucked up to me. He needs to be checked. All right, I love Lloyd Banks. Very great rapper. A lot of people don't think so because he's just very laid back and doesn't promote himself. I mean, it's his fault that he's where he's at, wherever he is. Gucci Mane, I really, really love. I didn't really, like, like my older brother tried to get me on Gucci Mane. I wasn't here for him. I thought he was just a hot, fat, ratchet-ass mess. But Gucci Mane, out of prison, I was just like, Jesus Christ. Like, I, I had to stop, look, and listen. And then I went back and listened to his old catalog, and I just fell in love. Like, he is an amazing artist. And I think a lot of the bullshit really, um clouded me from really taking him seriously back in the day. I love Lil Wayne. Um, somebody please tell him to cut them fucking dreads off. Um, it's starting to look like fun guy. Like, what happened? But amazing artist, one of the greatest rappers of all time. 
50 Cent, I like 50 Cent's petty fucking ass. Um, I like his show Power. I, I, Power's on my shit list, but 50 Cent, I think, is an amazing artist, and I love how business savvy he is, but he is also a petty piece of shit, and he is a court jester. I also am a big fan of Drake. People say what they want about Drake. Drake is an amazing, amazing artist, one of the best rappers that we have out now. I would like to say, like, unpopular opinion to me, he is the Beyonce of rap. And when I say Beyonce of rap, I mean, like, he is just, like, that mainstream go-to rapper that everybody wants on their track. Uh, fun fact about him, actually, back in the day, before he really, like, popped in the United States, he lived down here in Houston. So, my older brother had a girlfriend, and she went out to the club one night, and Drake was there, and he got her number, and they were texting. So, I'm just like, I mean, okay, girl. She says she wasn't feeling him, though, because he wasn't attractive at the time. This was Drake before the beard, so I, I can understand. My favorite female artist, I love Beyonce. Beyonce is the queen of everything except for acting, but I love Beyonce. I, I'm, I'm a member of the Bayhive, but I would like to say I'm a logical member of the Bayhive. Like, I don't go out and do crazy shit and attack people with bee emojis unless they deserve it. But, um, I mean, I can't really fault the Beehive. We stand for greatness. I love, I followed her entire career. Fun fact about her, um, Tina Knowles used to do my mom's hair way back in the day. And my mom has actually held Beyonce and played with her as a, um, when she was a little baby. I, I, I just love Beyonce. I love Rihanna. I love her non-singing, non-dancing ass. I look up to her because she is just a she has just been able to become a beautiful business mogul. Like she's in fashion, music, movies. She could be a model if she wanted to. She could walk the runway. Like Rihanna is ultimate goals, just a style icon that I look up to and strive to be one day. Uh, I love Ariana Grande. The one thing about Ariana Grande. I feel like the music industry is trying to find artists that can somewhat replace like the major artists that I grew up with. And I feel like they're trying to replace her with Mariah Carey. I mean, nobody can replace for, nobody can replace Mariah Carey. But let's face it, like Mariah Carey's vocals aren't there and neither is her work ethic. But Ariana Grande to me, at first when I listened to her music, I felt kind of weird because it kind of gave me like a kids bops tea. But as she has progressed and really grown and gotten older, like, I love that she has, like, a defined sound. And in my opinion today, she is the queen of pop music, in my humble opinion. Moving on to, like, what I would call the princess of pop, Normani. Normani is the main artist that I am rooting for today. Normani is the total, complete package. She is the only one out there dancing. She can sing. She's gorgeous. Like, I just love Normani. I feel like Normani is going through a lot of shit. I feel like the industry is trying to suppress her. I feel like... I feel like if Normani was a white woman or a racially ambiguous black woman, she would have all the accolades. She would have all the awards. She would have all the praise, the press, the promotion. She would be on all the magazines. She would be on all the runways. Like, they, if she was white, they would beef her up as the next Britney Spears. But Normani, I feel like also her team has a lot to do with her not succeeding. I hate the fact that, like, they don't promote her singles. They don't really push her and get her out there like that. Why isn't she um, performing on the BET Awards? Why is she not... Like, why is her music always cutting out every live performance that she does? Why does her music links on Spotify take you to Camila Cabello's racist-ass catalog? Like, Normani, I really hope that she does not give up and pushes through. Because there's just a big issue these days with our black artists kind of either just giving up, being suppressed, being depressed, or also getting killed off. And I really just want Normani to just push through the bullshit and also, I want them to take her out of the R&B category. Why is it that every black artist has to be put in the R&B category or rap when they make pop music that the white people jig to? Like, Normani and Lizzo are pop. They're not R&B. Cut it the fuck out. Another artist that I feel like is being suppressed, Ari Lennox. Ari Lennox, to me, has it. She is everything I've needed since Erykah Badu. Like... 
Ari, Ari Lennox is like the only girl, in my opinion, really doing like not just R and B but soul music, like music that speaks to the soul. Like, I really am still irritated at the fact that she, the BET, did not give her award and instead gave it to Lizzo, who I like I said is a pop artist. Ari Lennox deserved that award, and I, granted, I feel like she's given up a little too easy though. Like, girl, just hang in there. Like, your time will come. Even though her music is very mature and she's been out there grinding for a while, like, you still, like, have a long way to go. But, girl, you're there. You have it. Do not give up. Cardi B. I love Cardi B. I, I will say, honestly, um, when she first stepped on the scene on Love & Hip Hop, her personality, it took a while for me to get used to it. Because I don't really gravitate towards, like... Um, people that have just very like rambunctious, like overly ratchet and gutter personalities. But over time, she did grow on me, especially when she got off 11 Hip Hop because she was really cutting the fool on there and starting to get on my nerves. But Cardi B, I think she is the princess of rap. I love her music. Um, I kind of feel like she got a Grammy a little too soon. But, I mean, she did have one of the best albums that year, and, but it is what it is. It was a little too soon, but, I mean, what the fuck can we do about it now? I, um, I, I'm really interested to see where she's going. It kind of feels like she kind of put music on the back burner for now and is focusing on acting. Um, I'm interested to see her in any movie. I think she would make a great actress. Um, she's a great, she's a good rapper, but, like, she doesn't write her shit. And that's kind of keep also keeping me from kind of really like calling her the queen. You're the princess girl, but you're talented and I love everything that you bring to the table. Nicki Minaj, who in my opinion is still the queen. She is the queen of rap. She writes her music. She really grinds it out. And granted, I tend to um, feel like her features are better than her actual songs. Like, overall, she makes great music, but, like, for some reason, her CDs just never really just... They re never really just fully satisfy me for some reason. But, like, I overall, I love her music. She has a great catalog. I feel like the thing that keeps me from really, like, being a full-on stand and going up for Nicki Minaj is her fuck-ass barbs. I'm sorry. Um, love Nicki, but her barbs are shitty. Shitty human beings. I feel like the barbs really just don't... I feel like they're just her yes man. They don't really hold her accountable. They don't ever really call her out whenever she's wrong. I mean, the only thing I agree with them on is they don't like Kenneth Petty. I, neither do I. I feel like... I feel like Nikki has made some questionable dating decisions, but girl, you... I, you should have worked that out with Nas. I don't know why you are with this man. But overall, Nicki Minaj, I love her. She will go down in history as one of the greatest artists of all time. She is not just female rapper. I feel like overall, she is one of the greatest rappers of all time. Uh, getting into my favorite movies and movie genres. My favorite genres, I love comedy. I love to go to the movies. I love shits and giggles on screen. I like scary movies. Scary movies, to me, are funny to me. I will say when I was younger, scary movies, I used to be like definitely afraid of like Chucky. I was afraid of Jason. I was very afraid of um, Michael Myers. Uh, Freddy Krueger didn't really scare me. I don't know why. Something about, I just never take Freddy Krueger movies seriously. Um, I, I really didn't fuck with Candyman. Candyman was a little too realistic for me and I never even finished the first movie. However, I will try to sit down and watch it in preparing for the um, reboot that they're about to come out with. The reboot doesn't look re very scary to me, but uh, I never tried that um, count his name five times shit. I, I don't fuck with that. It was too real. Uh, I love thrillers. I would say um, this. I like the Hunger Games. I guess that classifies as a thriller. I don't know. But um, I love like Terminator. I think the last Terminator that came out was very underrated. I think that was... They kind of went like a, femin, a feminized route, which I didn't mind at all. But favorite movies of all time, I would have to say, well, for one, Bridesmaids. Bridesmaids... Before Bridesmaids, I, every time I would go to the movies, I would never really, like, laugh out loud. 
But that was the first movie that I laughed at from start to fucking finish. Like, that movie was hilarious. And I think it was a beautiful thing seeing that every member of that cast really come up off of that movie. Like, you saw everybody really just step into that A-list actor after that movie hit. And it was just... That is a modern-day classic. I absolutely love The Devil Wears Prada. Um, I feel like it's kind of weird that I feel like they, that movie is just now getting its roses. I absolutely love Miranda Priestly. I just bought a Funko Pop of her. Meryl Streep was absolutely amazing in that movie alongside Anne Hathaway, who I absolutely adore Anne Hathaway. Like, as far... Like, I have a lot of favorite actresses, but as far as white women go, like, Anne Hathaway is at the top of the list. I think she's just a beautiful human being, amazing spirit. Love her to death. And I will watch any movie that she's in. Uh, I love Mean Girls. That is another modern-day classic. I will never, ever get tired of watching that movie. I've... I, I say the most times I've watched that movie in one week was at least 10. That movie is just I, it, iconic. I absolutely love it. Uh, I love The First Friday. The First Friday was absolutely amazing, like comedic gold. The second one was cool. Not better than the first. I, I liked the second one, but I didn't love it like the first. The third one was just, eh, it was all right. Like, it, it gave me a little giggle here and there, but it didn't really do shit for me, to be honest. The Players Club, I love The Players Club. That is, like, one of my favorite movies of all time. And today it just hit on Netflix, so if you've never seen it, check that shit out. Uh... Uh, getting into video games, I love video games. I am a gamer. I have been playing video games since the age of four up until like today, 27. Like I absolutely, that's something I feel like I would never grow out of. Um, my favorite types of video games are RPGs, which are like role playing games. I love fighting games and I love sandbox games. Like I'm not really into shooters. Uh, shooters are kind of like boring to me unless they have an amazing story like Half-Life. Uh, I absolutely love Half-Life. Half-Life is like one of the best games ever made. If um, if you're bored and you got a PlayStation or Xbox, look up that game and play it. You will absolutely be mind blown. Uh, Mass Effect is one of my favorite game franchises of all time. I, I love the original trilogy, but I fucking hated the end like the end of mass effect 3 was one of the worst endings to any piece of entertainment i've ever seen of all time the the thing about mass effect is it's a role-playing game and you make choices and decisions create your own character all that jazz the thing about mass effect though like what you the decisions you make in the first game you can carry that over to the second game and then carry those decisions from the second game to the third game but the thing that fucked me was you get to the ending, all your decisions that you made across all three games do not fucking matter. Like, you just pick one of three endings and they the only difference between them is the color and what happens to the main character. It was absolute bullshit. I think, I think that was actually the very first game or piece of entertainment that actually made me depressed. Like, I didn't play games for months after playing that because it was just like, what the fuck is the point? Um, they also try to continue Mass Effect on with Mass Effect Andromeda, and that, that game was just a fucking hot, shitty-ass mess. Like, they really could have left it alone. Bioware, as a whole, honestly, is on my shit list right now with these fucked up decisions they've been making. Like, they, Mass Effect could have been on the same level as Star Wars, and they just completely fucked it up. Like, they need to be slapped in the face with a dick with the decisions they're making. Uh, fighting games, I love Mortal Kombat. I've been playing Mortal Kombat since I was five years old. I can whip anybody's ass with Melina. I love Mortal Kombat. But I will say I did not like Mortal Kombat 11 and I did not like Mortal Kombat 10. I, I mainly didn't like them because um, I did not like either one of their stories. I did not like the blatant colorism in those games. That actually might be a separate video in its own. I do not like how they change up some characters' backstories either. Like... That's another, um, NetherRealm Studios is another developer I feel like is making fucked up questionable decisions. Like, what is going on with y'all? Like, do you just ignore the fans? Like, ignore what we want? 
Uh, let's see. Um, I love GTA. Anytime I'm bored, I hop on GTA Online. Grand Theft Auto, I absolutely just adore every game. Except for, I didn't really like GTA 4. GTA 4 to me was boring. I, it was the first and only Grand Theft Auto game where I was like skipping cutscenes. Like the shit was just boring to me. The driving mechanics were terrible. But I did like the Ballad of the Gay Tony DLC. I, that DLC should have been the main story. Like... You could go on dates, you could go to the club, you could do, like, other stuff that you couldn't even do in the main game. It was very weird, like, but I, that should have been the main game to me. All right, um, I'm also big into wrestling. Absolutely love wrestling. I started watching wrestling back in 2003. And um, while the men wrestlers are, are they're cool, like, they're always there, I watch them. I, I was mainly into the female wrestlers. Um, I was mainly a big fan of the diva era. I started off watching SmackDown, and the first woman that ever stuck out to me was Melina. And if you don't Melina, look her up on YouTube. Like, she is just this amazing wrestler. She started off as a valet, and a valet is mainly a girl that escorts their man to the ring and looks pretty. But what she would do was go to the ring, she would hop and do the splits like she's doing it on a dick, and then she would get into the ring, and it was just an iconic move that has never been done in wrestling ever. I just, I absolutely loved the diva era versus what they're doing today. Granted, the women are taken more seriously as wrestlers, and they don't even call them divas anymore, they're just called women now. But the thing is, there's just too many fucking women on the roster. Like, there's too many women, and there's too, like, only four girls really get the spotlight at a time now. Like, it's just ridiculous. Like, you have all these other girls sitting back in their, back there and catering, and I don't like um, that the storylines are just not good and where they need to be. Like, I would say the best women's wrestling storyline of all time was Trish Stratus versus Mickie James. Like, that was actually the first woman storyline I was introduced to watching Raw, because I started off watching SmackDown. Like, at that point, I didn't even know SmackDown, I didn't even know the women were there to wrestle, because on SmackDown, they were just really there to look pretty and do bikini contests. But on Raw, like, there has never been a storyline better than Mickie James versus Trish Stratus, and... I just, I want to see them try to get back to, like, really developing long-term feuds with these girls and really giving everybody the appropriate spotlight. I, I really feel like they need to trim down the roster. There's just too many fucking people there. They've, like, really hired up the independent circuit. And a lot of you might not know what I'm talking about because, like, wrestling isn't, like, super, super mainstream. But it's just, I don't, it grinds my gears when I see a company being greedy and really just trying to buy up all the talent so all the other wrestling promotions can't make it. But uh, moving on to my favorite TV shows, there's honestly too many TV shows to count. Like, and there's like a lot of stuff that I still have not even caught up on yet. But I will say, um, like, off the cuff scandal, um, I up until Olivia got kidnapped and put on that island prison, I was absolutely a huge Scandal fan. Like, I would watch it every single Thursday with a box of wine. Like, I absolutely just loved Scandal. I loved the fact that it was, to me, was it like the first like time we had like a black female lead in a um, sitcom or TV show? Let me know. I, I could be wrong, but like, she was like the first show that had a black female lead that was like super duper mainstream to me. But when she got kidnapped on that island prison and they gave her superpowers, I'm like, this, this shit is just, it was just too fantastic for me. And they were already headed into unrealistic territory. I will say though, like it did pick up back for me whenever they did the, um, how to get away with murder crossover episode. That was one of the best episodes of the um, whole entire series. In my opinion, I also do love how to get, get away with murder and another Shonda show. Uh, I will say this last season I kind of been watching off and on. I, I mean, I kind of felt like the story's a little dragged on, and I'm actually glad that this is their last season. Not because it was a bit like it got bad, but it was just it, it, how much longer can we drag this on? Like, is there time to conclude all of this? And then Viola Davis, who is just one of my favorite actresses of all time, Viola Davis probably has other movies to get to. So let, let, let's wrap this shit up. 
Uh, let's see. I also love Good Girls. That's um, a fairly new show. It's on NBC. They also have it on Netflix. You can catch up on it. I think they're in their third season now. It's a really great show about like housewives and crime, basically. Absolutely amazing talent. There are a lot of other TV shows that I like, but it's just like it's too hard to name a few. And it's too it's kind of hard to really fully get invested in these TV shows anymore because I feel like these series finales of these shows lately just have not been good. Like, I don't know what's going on with the writers. Maybe, like, more than three seasons is too excessive to write for. Or maybe they just get bored and just throw shit at the wall. But these series finales just... They've just been very underwhelming. Like, Game of Thrones was shitty. Power series finale was shitty. Like, what else is going to happen? Like... That's why I fear I fear getting too attached to a new show these days because they either get canceled or they are just the series finales just aren't what they are cracked up to be, you know? But that's a little bit more about me and the things that I'm into and the things that I love. Um, I'm going to keep rolling out some more content, so make sure to subscribe and to like this video so you can throw your boy in the algorithm. And I will come at you guys later with some more videos.